So far when working with derivatives, hopefully you know what a derivative is and you're able to know something about the derivative by looking at the graph because it's just a slope of the tangent line. What we're going to be looking at today is if we're given an equation, how are we going to find that derivative? So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find the derivative of a function using the definition of derivative. Right. Um, when we find the slope of a tangent line, I'm just going to get us through how to find the, um, using the definition of derivative, I just want you to see where the definition of derivative comes from. So let's say we have a picture here, and I'm going to draw just our normal a picture that looks like that. All right, um, I'm going to pick this point right here, and again, I have to do a little line because it won't let me do a dot. And what we're going to be trying to do is find the slope of this tangent line. So if I'm finding the slope of the tangent line, where was my point? I think it was about right there. Okay. So if I find, um, my goal is to find the slope of this tangent line, okay? The problem is the true slope of that tangent line only has one point on that graph. And so we need two points on the graph. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to find um, some secant lines. When we find the secant lines, what we're going to do, we have this point right here. And we're going to find the equation. Notice I just did one right there. Okay, we're going to find the equation of this line and then that still won't be quite close enough because I want the two points to just be as close together. So now the next time I'm going to find, the, we're going to move our point a little bit closer. So now my secant line is going to be a little bit closer. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take this, the secant line, which has two points on it. I'm just going to keep moving that point closer and closer and closer to the point where I actually want to find the slope of the curve at. And what's going to happen that x value is just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The distance between the two is just going to keep getting smaller. So the way that we're going to describe this is if I call this the point that I really want to find, x, and I'm going to call it y, but I'm actually going to change that because I'm going to call it another way of describing x would be, the y, excuse me, would be f of x. So we're going to have this point be x, f of x. That's where I want to find the true slope at. But what's going to happen, we actually are going to use two points. Um, what's going to happen is, let's say I pick this point up here. That point's going to be x plus some distance away. So we're going to call it delta x because delta x means a change in x. If it's 3 away, delta x would be 3. If it's 2 away, delta x would be 2. And then this point, the y value would just be whatever you get when you plug in x plus delta x. So it would be x plus delta x. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is finding the slope between these two points. And you'll notice the slope between those two points. If I subtract the y values, I'll get f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over x plus delta x minus x. And if I simplify that a little bit, I'll get f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And what I'm going to be doing Remember, I want this point to get super duper close, as close as it possibly can get to this one, so I actually have the truly the slope at that tangent point. So what we're going to be doing is letting our delta x get smaller and smaller and smaller. How do you let your delta x get smaller and smaller and smaller? We're going to find the limit as that delta x approaches zero, because that, that's the delta x, the difference between those two points is getting smaller. So hopefully you kind of recognize from working with chapter P that we worked a lot with this formula. Now we worked with limits from chapter one, so we're putting it all together. The reason that we did all of that work is because now what we found, if we find this answer, we have now found the true slope at that one point. It's no longer at two points anymore. We can actually find the slope of something at one specific point. Instead of using the slope of the line, this would be the slope of a curve formula. So the definition of derivative is that f prime of x, remember that's just another way of saying derivative, is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And that probably looks maybe a little bit overwhelming, but hopefully when we go through some examples, it will just be crystal clear. All right, let's try some examples. We're going to find the derivative of the function using the definition of derivative. And I'm going to write at the top of my paper since I don't have that right handy on me. I'm going to go ahead and write the definition of derivative right up here so that I do not forget it. So when we're finding the definition of derivative, we're finding actually the slopes of the tangent lines. 
And so what we're going to do on this one, to find the derivative, we'll find the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. So what we're going to do, again, if you remember, we're going to look down here. We're going to plug this x plus delta x in for that x. So we're going to have 1 minus x plus delta x quantity squared. So that will take care of this part of it. And then minus f of x. Well, we know that f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared. And notice that I am putting it in parentheses. And it's all over delta x. All right, now I'm going to try to simplify. I'm going to have 1 minus. You can either distribute this by writing it twice, or you can use Pascal's triangle, which I'm going to use. When you do that, I'm going to get x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. And then I'm going to distribute that minus sign to both parts, so I'm going to get minus 1 plus x squared. It's still all over delta x. And then from here, I'm getting rid of my parentheses, I'll have 1 minus x squared minus 2x delta x minus delta x squared minus 1 plus x squared still all over delta x. And then from here, let's see, my 1's will cancel, my x squareds will cancel, and remember from the previous problems that we've done, that should always happen. I get negative 2x delta x minus delta x squared all over delta x. Then I notice that up top, they both have a delta x, so I'm going to factor that out. So I get negative 2x minus delta x all over delta x. My delta x is cancel. So I'm left with negative 2x minus delta x. Please remember way up at the top of the problem, whoops, I forgot to put a zero there. We were, our goal was to find the limit as delta x approaches zero. So now I'm going to let delta x approach zero. And when I do that, I get negative 2x. And so I have actually just found that f prime of x, the derivative of the function, is equal to negative 2x. Voila, wasn't that fun? All right. So now, so that's the general, so no matter at what point, that's the um, curve that the derivative is going to follow. In example 8, it says to find the slope of the tangent line of number 7 at the point 2, negative 3. So if we know that the derivative is equal to negative 2x, if we want to find the derivative at the point when x equals 2, all you need to do is to plug in 2 for your x's, so negative 2 times 2. So we know that the derivative at x equals 2 is equal to negative 4, and that's what it is. And actually, if you remember, when we did, were on a previous video, when I drew a graph of this derivative, it should have given me a picture of, if you remember, we had a parabola on one of our other problems, and it gave me the derivative was a line, and notice that's exactly what I got was the equation of a line when I did that. Okay, let's try another example. We would like to find the derivative again, so if I want to find the derivative, I would like to find the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And again, what we're going to do, we're going to take x plus delta x and put it in for that x. So I'll get 3 quantity x plus delta x. I still have the plus 2. And then minus. The next thing it says is to find f of x. Well, we know that f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. Please notice I am putting it in parentheses. And then it's all over delta x. Now I'm going to get rid of my parentheses. So I'll get 3x plus 3 delta x plus 2 minus 3x minus 2 all over delta x. And just like I want, my x's cancel out, my 2's cancel out. So I'm left with 3 delta x over delta x. My delta x's cancel, so I'm just left with 3. If I'd like to find the limit as delta x approaches 0, there's nothing to plug in for delta x anymore, so my limit is 0. So we have just found that f prime of x, the derivative of the function, is equal to 3. And if you recall, 3x plus 2 looks something like this. Whoops, no, it does not look anything like that. It looks like a straight line, something like that. And you'll notice the slopes of all the tangent lines are equal to 3. And that's exactly what we got when we found the derivative using the definition of derivative. All right, um, this example I think I will save for working in class. So we'll just save this and do it in class. So hopefully now you have a good idea of how to find the derivative using the definition of derivative.